In today's video, we will review 10 questions student pilots may see on the private pilot written exam regarding traffic patterns and collision avoidance. Suggested study resources include Chapter 14 of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, the Aeronautical Information Manual, and FAR Part 91. The arrows that appear on the end of the north south runway indicate that the area According to Section 2-3 of the Aeronautical Information Manual, the portion of runway behind a displaced threshold is available for takeoffs in either direction and landings from the opposite direction. This question can be a bit tricky since it may seem like answer B could be the right answer. However, displaced thresholds can only be used for landing from the opposite direction. So in this case, a pilot could taxi and take off in the area with the white arrows just before runway 36 but could not use it for landing on runway 36. A pilot could use this area for extra landing roll when landing on runway 18. The correct answer is C. The segmented circle indicates that a landing on runway 26 will be with A. As you can see from the figure on the left, a pilot would make a right-hand traffic pattern for runway 26. The traffic pattern for landing on runway 26 is highlighted by the orange arrows. The wind direction is indicated by the red arrow and wind sock illustrated in the chart. As you can see the wind would be coming from the right and the pilot would be flying into a headwind, so the correct answer is A. Right quartering headwind. The traffic patterns indicated in the segmented circle have been arranged to avoid flights over an area to the The traffic patterns are illustrated by the arrows in the chart to the left. The traffic pattern for landing on runway 18 is right and there would be a right-hand traffic pattern for landing on runway 27. The traffic pattern for runways 36 and runway 9 are to the left. As you can see, the only area where there is not a flow of traffic is the southeast of the airport. The correct answer is C. The recommended entry position to an airport traffic pattern is Standard right and left-hand traffic patterns are illustrated in the image on the right. This diagram can be found in Chapter 14 of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. As you can see, the recommended entry to an airport traffic pattern is to enter at a 45-degree angle at the midpoint of the downwind leg at traffic pattern altitude. Traffic pattern altitude is typically 1,000 feet above the airport elevation unless otherwise indicated. Which runway and traffic pattern should be used as indicated by the wind cone in the segmented circle? To answer this question, let's draw the traffic patterns to help visualize. The left-hand traffic pattern for runway 36 is illustrated by the yellow arrows at the bottom of the chart. We know this is runway 36 since the north direction is illustrated by the letter N with the arrow at the top right of the image. Remember, runway numbers are indicated by the magnetic heading that the runway is aligned with so since due north is 360 degrees, the runway aligned with north is 36. Since due east is 90 degrees, runway 9er would be pointing east. Runway 18 would be due south since 180 degrees is the magnetic heading for due south. The left-hand traffic pattern for runway 9 is illustrated by the orange arrows. The right-hand traffic pattern for runway 18 is illustrated by the black arrows at the top of the chart. We can immediately eliminate option B since the traffic pattern for runway 9er is left and not right. Answer C is not correct because landing on runway 18 would be landing downwind. The pilot in this scenario would make a left-hand traffic pattern for runway 36 since they would be landing into a headwind as illustrated by the windsock. It is always recommended to take off and land into a headwind. The correct answer is A. Most Madeira collision accidents occur during Believe it or not, several studies have found that a majority of mid-air collision accidents occur on clear days. The underlying cause of mid-air collisions during clear days is that there is more air traffic on these days and pilots often get lulled into a sense of complacency on clear VFR flying days. 
That is why it is critical for pilots to see and avoid other aircraft, remaining vigilant by constantly scanning and watching out for other air traffic in the area. The correct answer is C. When two or more aircraft are approaching an airport for the purpose of landing, the right-of-way belongs to the aircraft. According to FAR Part 91.113, when two or more aircraft are approaching an airport for the purpose of landing, the aircraft at the lower altitude has the right-of-way, but it shall not take advantage of this rule to cut in front of another which is on final approach to land or to overtake that aircraft. The correct answer is C. Question 8 asks. How can you determine if another aircraft is on a collision course with your aircraft? According to Chapter 8-1-8 of the Aeronautical Information Manual, any aircraft that appears to have no relative motion and stays in one skin quadrant is likely to be on a collision course. Also, if a target shows no lateral or vertical motion, but increases in size, take evasive action. Answer C may seem like a logical choice since a pilot may assume that an aircraft on a collision course would get larger and appear to be rapidly advancing. However, typically there will be no apparent motion from an aircraft on a collision course. The correct answer is A. The most effective method of scanning for other aircraft for collision avoidance during daylight hours is to use See Chapter 14 of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge for more information on collision avoidance and the proper scanning techniques. When scanning for other air traffic, pilots should use a series of short, regularly spaced eye movements to search each 10-degree sector of the sky. The correct answer is C. When approaching to land at an airport without an operating control tower in Class G airspace each pilot must make. According to FAR Part 91.126, when approaching to land at an airport without an operating control tower in Class G airspace, each pilot of an airplane must make all turns of that airplane to the left unless the airport displays approved light signals or visual markings indicating that turns should be made to the right. The correct answer is C. Thank you for watching the video. Please like the video and subscribe for more flight training and aviation related educational videos.